Why are our daughters tagging a wall in London? And why are we letting it happen? Well, let me take you back to where it all started. Sean and Ella are both passionate about art. Anytime we're not traveling, they're working on new pieces, picking up supplies, and trying out new materials. They recently used spray paint for the very first time, and they loved the effect it created. I knew that we had a trip coming up to one of the great street art capitals of the world. It was the perfect opportunity for the girls to see some amazing pieces and get inspired. So I really like how it turned out. You have to wear a mask on your jeans so you don't inhale it. And I really want to do more. Okay, they turned out really good, but I wish we could do it on a wall. That would be fun, right? That would be way cooler. You're watching Top Flight Family. We're the Sanyobi family from New York City. And last year, we visited 21 resorts in 2021. Now that major cities around the world have reopened, this year we're visiting 22 cities in 2022. This is city number one. We started our trip with a stay at Four Seasons Hotel London at 10 Trinity Square in one of their stunning two-bedroom residences. It had a spacious living dining area, a beautiful open concept kitchen, two plush bedrooms, luxurious bathrooms, and even a laundry room with a washer dryer. The property is located in a landmark building in the heart of the city, overlooking the iconic Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. What the heck, you guys? <laughs> what? what? Why are you in the closet? <laughs> We're vibing. Yeah. Good, good vibe. Yeah. You're not down to the, with the vibes? This is not a vibe. Not with the vibes? Yo, I pitch wisdom for the kids them. Solid as a prism keeps a funky rhythm. If I want it, I go and get it. My blood thicker than water. We up like a zip of my jeans. Seems got ashes from the plane. I'm elevating and crash. We headed to Westminster to meet our friends Yaya and Lloyd. They knew we wanted to try some traditional English dishes, so they took us to Goddard's at Greenwich, which has been operating since 1890. They're known for their pie and mash, but they're also known for a dish that most people either love or hate, jellied eels. Here uh, we have some jellied eel. Lloyd said it's his favorite dish. It's not my favorite. So he said we should definitely try it. You should try it. Definitely. So he's gonna demonstrate how to eat it first. <laughs> We're always up for trying new foods, so we ordered some. <laughs> okay. So this is good. And more pepper. Pepper. Okay. Yeah. Hot sauce. It does have a bone inside, so I'm gonna have to. Yeah, around that. What's it like? <laughs> the verdict? So silent. <laughs> it's actually not bad. You'd be surprised. It's actually not bad. Sure? Describe. Now. Your face is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> But it's cool though. We on our way up, so it's cool though. Trying to get the moolah copper tuto. I need a big crib with a blue nose. Step into my dreams like it's you roll. All right, what you guys get from the candy store? And then chucks. And this is a lollipop. And this is like powder to dip it in. Let me see those moves, Ella. <laughs> That night, we had dinner at Mei Ume at Four Seasons 10 Trinity Square. This restaurant serves both Chinese and Japanese dishes and has some really stunning decor. Yaya and 
Floyd recommended checking out the East End because there's a lot of great street art here. So we're gonna do a little walking tour to check out the scene here. I booked this tour with Alternative London, which provides off the beaten track experiences for visitors to the city. Our guide started the tour by answering a common question. What exactly is the difference between graffiti and street art? Graffiti, we're talking about the letter styles. People writing their nickname on a surface that doesn't belong to you. Everything else, like sculptures, imagery, stencils, paste dots, characters, all these things will get onto them a little bit. In London, like in many cities, graffiti is illegal. But you might be shocked by the maximum sentence you can receive for it. No, 22 months in prison. There are currently at least two dozen young men sitting in police cells up and down this country for changing the color of the surface. The lines between what counts as street art versus what counts as graffiti can often be blurry. General rule of thumb for most people, if you like it, it's street art if you don't like <laughs> One of the things that makes London's street art scene so different from what you'll find in other cities is that the works sprang up organically. While other cities host festivals where they invite street artists from around the world to create murals, much of the street art in London arose organically as a reaction to the conflicts that were happening in the artists' communities. So in this area, when huge numbers of Bengali started moving here, there was a backlash from a small part of the white community called the National Front, a very far-right fascist group who were like gaining a lot of political ground around that time, and it became very dangerous to be a Bengali in London. It all culminated with the murder of a um, textile worker in Al-Tab Ali, who was walking home from work, and he got um, beaten to death. And this caused a huge uprising in the community. Yeah, since then, this area has sort of become an example for racial cohesion in the UK, and that's what we've got. Yeah, Bengali and the Burke are walking hand in hand with a white person with all red bloodshed behind them, so they're walking away from that for the brighter future. While graffiti and street art have historically been outlets for the disenfranchised to make their voices heard, street art in particular is now often being co-opted for commerce. And we're getting these apartment blocks that are like 900,000 pounds for one bed, 1.2 million for a penthouse, uh, for a two bed, and three mil for a penthouse. They'll use the street art in the area on their brochures and go, look, look how cool and edgy this area is. It's common to see luxury fashion brands like Gucci hire street artists to create murals like this that are not overtly branded, but that do feature their products. From Gucci's perspective, you're doing this, right? They pay £15,000 a month for that to be there. And they do that because young people, predominantly, will come along and photograph it and put it on their news feeds and say, look at this great piece of street art. So they're doing their advertising for them. The fact that street art is becoming co-opted actually makes graffiti that much more important because it still exists as a form of protest. The young people go into those areas and paint graffiti as a way of saying we are still here, we yeah. can't just sweep us under the carpet. A lot of the street art, however political, doesn't really serve that role as much anymore. Now I'm not saying I want graffiti everywhere in street art nowhere, but I do see the role of graffiti now being more important than street art in that mm -hmm. sense because no one likes it and it will never be acceptable. Yeah. And that's important, I yeah. think, if you want to have some kind of count to culture. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of India, London is probably one of the best places in the world to eat Indian food. We met up with our friend Abhina at Dishum Carnaby. Dishum is one of the most popular Indian restaurant brands with five locations in London, plus locations in Manchester, Birmingham, and Edinburgh. And I have to say, it definitely lived up to the hype. The tube. Oh, the tube. Because the tunnel's like a tube. Over dinner the previous night, Abena had told us that South London often gets overlooked by visitors to the city. She encouraged us to head south of the river to check out Brixton, especially since the area has some great street art. All right, so we're here in Brixton. This is uh, the Afro Caribbean side of uh, London. So we're here to check it out, check out some restaurants, check out some sites. I don't really lack nothing. Trip black fish, hit the splash button. 
David Bowie grew up in Brixton, and when he passed away suddenly in 2016, this mural by street artist Jimmy C became an impromptu shrine to the artist. It's possibly the first piece of street art in London to be preserved by the city with a protective shield. Much of London's street art sprang up as a result of conflict and oppression, and the street art in Brixton is no exception. In 1981, rumors of police brutality against a young man sparked angry confrontations between Brixton residents and the police. The conflict eventually erupted into three full days of protests and riots. Much of the violence happened right here on Atlantic Road. This mural by artist Jacob V. Joyce was completed last summer to remember the 40th anniversary of the riot. Alright, so we're at Fish Wings and Tings. Yes. This place is excellent. You can tell my napkin's very dirty. That's usually a good sign. The plate is clean. Plate is clean. So definitely check it out if you're in the Brixton area. The next morning, we had breakfast, took a little dip in the pool, and moved over to our new hotel, Four Seasons Hotel London at Park Lane. We stayed in an ambassador suite with a plush living dining area and a king bedroom, while the girls were in an adjoining double room. This property is located in Mayfair, an affluent area in the West End of London, not too far from Buckingham Palace. All right, we're here with Pascal, Neil, the boys. We're reunited, so we all met in California on a group trip there. So it's really cool to see them again in London. As we were walking around with Pascal and her family, we stumbled across a new gallery in the basement of Claridge's Hotel that was exhibiting some works by Damien Hirst, who's currently the most commercially successful fine artist in the world. The exhibit was incredibly colorful as it was a mix of his giant pipe cleaner animals and his color chart series. Pascal just bought us this adorable little Christmas ornament. We're definitely putting this one. This is the first one that we're putting on the tree. Yes. First one on the tree this year, right? So, I went to my first football match. I'm officially an Arsenal's fan. The guys who play, I don't know any of the names, but I got my vest. Went to my first game. You're official. I'm official. We won last night, three to one. So, I'm an Arsenal's fan. What's the chant? Oh, I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded like they were singing. Oh, so <laughs> So, sorry, that's what it sounds like to me. Okay, today is a big day because we are doing the graffiti workshop today, so the girls are finally gonna get to spray paint an actual wall. Pascal told me that her sons had taken a graffiti workshop a few months back and really enjoyed it. So we booked it on Airbnb Experiences and headed over to Leak Street Arches near Waterloo. This tunnel is one of the few places in London where it's actually legal to paint on the walls. Back in 2008, world-famous street artist Banksy hosted his Cannes Festival here. And since then, the tunnel has become a popular destination for fans of graffiti and street art. So that's a cool thing about London as well, that you have so many different legal spots that you can paint a lot as well. That was Mo. He's done graffiti for over 25 years. He's originally from Sao Paulo in Brazil and now teaches graffiti workshops in London. Typography is quite simple. So what we do in graffiti is stylish. Yeah, we try to get our own identity through the letters. Yeah. Mo showed us the basics of graffiti technique, from how to add stylistic flourishes to your letters, how to fill the letters in, how to blend colors together, how to add decorative touches, how to outline the letters, and how to use shadows and highlights to create a more three-dimensional effect. Serge and the girls put on their gloves and masks, and they were ready to start. 
feeling? My hand hurts. Really? It's a lot of spraying, right? It died. And now we know graffiti artists have to have so much stamina. Believe it or not, I never did this as a kid. What? Yeah. You've been growing up in the gritty Lower East Side? Yeah, this is what my neighborhood looked like, but <laughs> I just didn't do it. I think people think it's interesting to do something that they always see, eh? but never touch kind of thing and you always when you pass by someone painting you do have that sensation of oh I, I'd like to try you know but it's always good to push people to do things that they're not used to yeah. and they like that because like in the end it's a masterpiece that they create you know yeah. from something that they didn't know that they could do. As I watch Serge and the girls work on their tags I realize that graffiti is an outlet for a very fundamental human desire that all of us share the desire to be heard, to connect with others, and to leave a mark. But as this form of self-expression becomes co-opted by financial and commercial interests, is the future of London's graffiti and street art in danger? There's a real threat to the creative industries here, which is one of our biggest industries, when everything becomes about the commercial financial districts and we lose that balance between commerce and creativity. So it's on a real knife edge at the moment, I think. But I think most of the best artwork in the world does come out of challenging situations as well. So it's, there's always a paradox, there's always a tightrope. We always think that the best days have gone and then someone will come and do something absolutely amazing. Okay, that was city number one of the 22 cities we were visiting in 2022. If you'd like to check out city number two, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.